Hi, welcome back to BTW Blanchy Talks Watches. Today we're going to be building a custom watch. This will be based on a Vostok Amphibia. I have a range of parts I can work from. I have four dial options. The three on the left are genuine Vostok and the sandwich dial on the right hand side is an aftermarket dial. For the bezels I have six different options here. The Two in the top right are aftermarket, and the other four are original. I have two cases to choose from. This is the 710 case, which is a cushion style case. And I have the 420 case. So there's quite a difference in the size in these. The 420 being one of the smaller Vostoks, which is the 18 mil lugs, whereas the 150 case has the standard 22 mil lugs. For the hands, I'm going to go for aftermarket orange sword hands with great loom, and then standard white second hand. Now assessing the parts of this build, I think first off I'm going to try out the 150 case paired with this aftermarket dial. As for the bezel, my initial feeling is I'll probably go for this one here, possibly this one. But I'll wait until the build is complete to decide. I might try a few different options and see which works best. Okay, so I've just put this little felt pad down here for a bit of protection for the parts as I'm working on them. So I'll open up the movement here from its holder. Now this is a date movement, but it doesn't matter. Um, the date will just be covered up by the dial. So as you can see here, it is a automatic movement. So what I'll do is I'll just quickly pull off the rotor to stop it winding while I'm working on it. So taking off the rotor is quite easy. It's just one screw in the back. I say big screw, it's a, it's a big by watch standards, but it's still quite small. It is important to get yourself a decent set of watch screwdrivers. These are a cheap set, but they are specific for watches, so they're they're quite good. And the standard small ones you get in a hardware shop just aren't small enough. Okay, so there's the screw. It is minute, although that's rather large when you're looking at the scale of a watch. I'll just put it in the pot there for safekeeping and then I will gently pull off the rotor there. So I'll put that also in the pot just so we know it's safe. So what that will do now is it will stop the watch winding itself. So you can see here now the watch is not currently running. If it was running, see this little wheel here ticking back and forth. Um, you can see there it's just kicked off from me putting it down so there's a slight residual charge left in it. Um, especially on a Vostok movement like this it's not the end of the world if you're putting hands on while it's moving. They're quite robust but it's best practice just to stop it. Next step will be to remove this temporary clear plastic movement spacer held on by these two screws. So now we'll pop the movement out of the holder. Okay. The next step then is to remove the temporary crown that came with the watch movement. So to do this, you just have to push in this little plunger here and then pull and it should come straight out. There we go. So the next thing we'll do is we'll fit this aftermarket 
sandwich style. Now this is a lovely sunburst effect on this dial here and it's called sandwich because you can see there's multiple layers. You can see the blue and the white layer so there's cut through in the blue which gives depth to the indicators and they are loomed. So we'll go ahead now and fit the dial. To attach the dial you need to undo these little screws here and just there. So I just need to get a smaller screwdriver there. Now that's done the job. You want to make sure the dial is evenly spaced. So once you're happy with that, tighten back down these retaining screws. So now we have the dial firmly secured to the movement. Okay, the next step is to fit the hands. Okay, so it appears that these orange hands don't actually fit. Now they are made for this watch, so it's quite frustrating that they won't go on. And I do have a spare set here, which are black arrows. So it's not going to match. It's not going to pop as well as the the orange would have. Good example of how easy the hand should have gone on. Put this over here. Line it up. Press down, and that's that fitted. So, significant difference from the struggle I had with the orange hands there. That's very unfortunate. I'm quite annoyed about that, to be honest. Okay, so that turned out to be incredibly irritating to fit the hands. Um, I got there in the end, unfortunately not with the orange hands I'd wanted to use. Um, I will be sending a message to the seller of those and seeing what they can do for me and um, it looks like the holes in the hands are just slightly too small so next up we have the second hand i'm still going to go for this white second hand just to pick up the white in the dial So I'll just move the hands around to see, do they catch? And they appear to be going fine. Next step will be to fit it inside the case. So I'll just take out this crown. Now to take off the case back of this, you need a three pronged case back removal tool. Once you've undone the tension on it, I find it easier to use it. It's just my spring bar tool here just to unscrew the ring. Pop the ring off. And the case back, you can just scoop it from these little notches here. There you go. So I'll gently take out the gasket. We'll reuse that. It's brand new. And then the 
movement ring. This is held in place by the two screws that we removed earlier, here and here. So I'll go ahead and reinstall them now. So I'd like to kind of get it seated a little bit if I can and then try and gently get it the rest of the way in with the screwdriver. Okay, so now that is attached. Okay, and now we'll get the first look of the dial on hands inside the case. So there it is. Quite nice. Once you have the crown security in place, the next step is to reinstall the O-ring gasket. So you just simply push it back in. I usually do this with my finger. To ensure I don't do any damage to the gasket itself, because this is what causes the water resistance. Next then is the case back. It's in the two little slots, push it in, followed by the retaining ring. So I usually try and just make sure it's seated and screwing on easily. Before getting my case back tool to tighten it down. So there we have a watertight watch. Next will be the bezel. So I'll try this one out first off. This is actually the standard bezel on the 150 case. It's just a matter of squeezing it on really what you have to have a bit of a knack to it now. Bit of a knack to getting this seated correctly. See, it's not sitting flush, so I'll just pop that back off. So, there is a copper spring inside there. So, it's kind of just look at the draw, really. Okay, so there we have it, one very nice hand wind Vostok. Now, if anyone was paying attention at the start of the video, you'll remember I took off the rotor. So let me know in the comments if you noticed that before I put case back back on um, you can leave it as hand winds there's no problem with that and um, what having it as hand one only would do is it allows you to use a, a slimmer profile case back but I don't mind that I was just trying to see who was paying attention so let me know in the comments if you spotted it now to put the rotor back on you just drop it in place Pretty simple. Grab your screw very gently and screw it back in. Now you can see as it winds, winds the gears. So same as before, we'll put the case back back on. 
in the retaining ring. Okay, so here's the final product. Um, I've added a cheap Amazon engineered strap. I think it's about twenty pounds. So we'll see how it looks now. Uh, reference my wrist is about seven and a quarter inches. Now I think that fits quite nicely. A uh, nice solid feel, good weight to it, and a one-off custom watch. Um, I know this was a bit more of an assembly than a full build, but to be honest, that's what a lot of watchmaking is. It's just assembling parts. Um, not the easiest build I've done. Not the most complicated either. Um, you never really know what's going to happen until you dive in and get started. So after living with the watch for a few days, I decided to change the bezel. Um, I've gone for a Coin Edge Boris bezel with a Seiko insert from one second closer. Um, I think this fits the watch absolutely perfectly and it looks, in my opinion, far better than the standard 150 bezel I had on it. This just goes to show, even when you're finished a build or a mod, there's always room for change and improvement. And um, that's the beauty of doing it yourself. You can easily just make these changes and get it just right for you. So that's the build complete. Um, it's gonna stay like this for now. I am tempted to change the bracelet to an alligator style leather bracelet, maybe in navy blue or possibly a brighter blue to pick up the, the brighter shades in the dial. Um, thanks for watching everyone, I really appreciate it. Um, any engagement at all with the video really helps me. So if you could drop a like, share, comment, subscribe, anything, um, it's really good and I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll do more again in the future. Thanks very much.